an opinion you have that might piss some people off. Okay, um... I don't think the trans movement is about safeguarding people's ability to express their gender. I think it was brought forth as a social issue for politicians to get behind, and now it's used as a wedge issue to weed out ideologically non-compliant people. Oh, supporting the trans movement is all about weeding out ideologically non-compliant people, is it? So trans folks are totally free to express themselves and can access gender-affirming care. They don't have to worry about being fired or kicked out of their home for being who they are. They're not being accused of being pedophiles and groomers and politicians and religious leaders aren't publicly calling for their execution. Trans women can compete in sports and trans folks can use the washroom that matches their gender identity without being harassed or assaulted. Good to know all of that's been taken care of and supporting trans folks is just a social issue for politicians to use to slap some barbecue sauce on and feed to their base. This is Rebel HQ. I'm Sandy Lovas. It's an opinion you have that might piss some people off. This silly question gives good insight into people's characters. Mine is, Iron Man 3 is a better Christmas movie than Die Hard, but not better than Die Hard 2. But this guy feels comfortable saying what he said about an issue that will never personally affect him from the comfort of his privilege in an apartment that has more personality than him. I don't think the trans movement is about safeguarding people's ability to express their gender. I think it was brought forth as a social issue for politicians to get behind, and now it's used as a wedge issue to weed out ideologically non-compliant people. How so? Hmm? How is weeding out transphobic people a wedge issue? Maybe he's confused about what he's saying because transgender people are being attacked for not being compliant with cisgender norms. They're the ones having actual laws created to erase them from society because they're not compliant with the white patriarchy. Funny how this guy is bothered by that. To that end, I think it deliberately empowers the most emotional and dogmatic people, like those going after J.K. Rowling and Dave Chappelle. And so according to this expert, it's dogmatic for transgender people and their allies to call out Dave Chappelle and J.K. Rowling for spewing transphobia, but it's not dogmatic for a couple of people who have not been hurt in the slightest for being called out to continue spreading their bigotry about something they will never personally experience, which results in further hostility and violence towards transgender people. Right, I forgot to mention, this guy is an expert in not knowing what the fuck he's talking about. I mean, we all know there's a distinction to be had, but many of us pretend like there's not because we've been told that there's not, and that the right thing to say is that there's no distinction. No one is saying there's no distinction between transgender and cisgender people. Lived experiences in how society has treated people is drastically different for a transgender person than it is for a cisgender person. What we're saying is that there should be no difference in how we treat people based on if they are cisgender or transgender. A transgender woman is a woman and should be respected as such. A transgender man is a man and should be respected as such. It reminds me of Orwell's 1984 where he's being tortured and repeatedly asked how many fingers are being held up and ultimately the right answer is whatever the state says there is. I've read 1984, granted it was a long time ago, and I remember the main character being tortured until he breaks and says, do it to her instead, possibly reflecting how the powerful pits disadvantaged groups against each other. I also remember how the state would remove words from the vocabulary so people wouldn't be able to fully express themselves. You know how don't say gay bills are being passed and how books are being banned for schools for suggesting anything other than cisgender heterosexual relationships. Many accept these terms because it's the path of least resistance set forth by the people who own and run the megaphones who dictate what does and does not make a good person, as well as a loyal army of shock troops who will effectively come after you and your reputation both off and on Twitter if you step out of line. The path of least resistance would be to conform to the gender norms put forth by ruling men, not to risk abandonment, harassment, assault, and murder for expressing who we are. And he wants to talk about shock troops with lips of TikTok out there targeting LGBTQ plus folks and far right groups hoarding guns in anticipation of the day they can use them to kill people who aren't like him. The solution always seems to be to control language and grant the ruling class more control. Why not say which politicians have gained more control by supporting trans folks? How has the ruling class seized more power by forcing people to use preferred pronouns? But you know what? This guy is right. Politicians are using the trans movement as a social issue to get behind to weed out ideologically non-compliant people to get more control. Just not in the way he's whining about. For more of my stuff, look for me on social media's left of the box. Don't forget to hit buttons and leave comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, get informed, get involved.